Hello and welcome back to IGN Live at E3 and a special edition of Unlocked. It's actually our 300th episode by sheer and utter coincidence. I'm Ryan McCaffrey and joining me today, Destin Legary, who you normally see on Unlocked, and two awesome guests who we very rarely get to see on Unlocked. I'm so thrilled to have them. Lucy O'Brien from IGN Australia. Hello. And Miranda Sanchez. Hello. Great to see all of you. So uh, we've got a lot to cover. This is uh, th episode 300, but it works out. What makes it special is not only this awesome set and the fact that we're down in LA, but it's E3. We just had a ton of Xbox announcements. I want to start with the Xbox One X. Of course, that is the big topic in the world of Xbox this week. Uh, let's just start with what has definitely been the most controversial aspect uh, of this. I've already written an editorial for IGN, but I want to start with you guys. Pricing, the pricing of Xbox One X. Yes, it's a powerful console. Yes, you're going to pay for it. What do we think of that? Lucy, I'm going to start with you. Yeah, I mean, I think I speak for a lot of us when I say I don't have a 4K TV. <laughs> and I think that um, if I'm going to invest in the Xbox One X for that price, I'm also going to have to invest in a 4K TV. So that's like a whole bunch of money right. down to really fully appreciate uh, the console. So I'm not too sure how I'm going to swing with this one. Like, I might get it if my Xbox One dies because it's starting to make funny noises. Um, but yeah, otherwise, I'm not sure. I mean, it is worth saying that the Xbox One X does have benefits on 1080p displays. You're going to get the super sampled image, yeah. maybe yeah. some smoothed out frame rate. And it's smaller. But a smaller, beautiful looking yes. box. It's, yeah, it's much nicer looking. I love yeah. that. Yeah, Destin, yeah, where are you landing with, uh, with the X? I know you've been okay. very vocally enthusiastic. You were ready to pay 600 right? on Unlocked before in. we left. So you're, I'm in, you're Ryan. good to go? It's cheaper than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> I already skipped the S, so yeah. I am really, really excited for the X. There's going to be some confusion there, S, <laughs> X. But uh, yeah, I really like that it's smaller. It's going to run whisper quiet like all the other ones. Well, we Albert Pinello was on here on our live show the other day. I can't keep track of what day it is, 83 <laughs> anymore, but uh, I was interviewing here. He did say, I asked him in comparison to the Xbox One S, which is unbelievably whisper quiet. He, 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 was, he candidly said it will be a bit louder than that, okay. but okay. not, you know, not like turbine jet engine kind of thing. Well, I had to restrain myself from buying the S. Yeah. So now that the X is here, I'm ready to make that investment. I'm ready to upgrade to 4K. I've been kind of waiting to see where all the consoles uh, kind of land with the Pro and everything. Yeah. But now that I've seen Forza running in 4K 60, I'm ready to make the jump. Do you, it looks do you have gorgeous. the TV yet? You got Not the, yet. So you're going to be shopping. I'm getting the Samsung one you wrote about, but yeah, for oh, a man. little bit smaller model. Yes. Yeah. Miranda, what are you thinking so on the X? So every time I see HDR gameplay or 4K gameplay, I'm just blown away. And I am so sad because I can definitely not make that investment right now. Um, but I think I'm still rolling with my original Xbox that I bought day one. And I'm going to keep going with it until it dies. And then when it does, maybe I'll get an Xbox One X. Like, that's yeah. kind of the plan. Um, and then. Hopefully, eventually, I'll get a 4K TV, and it'll be a really good Christmas. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for me, I, it's it re we really need to wait and see where the third-party games are going to land as far as, yes, it's more powerful than the PS4 Pro, but are developers going to take advantage of that? Yeah. That's the thing. It's like there's more overhead there, but, you know, we, it, it wouldn't surprise me at all if things ended up just running the same on the PS4 Pro and Xbox One X, which makes that $500 price a little bit harder to stomach, I think. Yeah. So uh, I'm in a wait and see mood, and I'm like, you guys, I don't have a 4K TV yet, so suddenly the $500 Xbox One X turns into roughly a $1,500 or so. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> what I mean. Xbox yeah. One X. It's also worth pointing out it's $500 here in the United States. Where I live and in Australia, it's $649. <laughs> so it's a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, all right, Forza was the signature game uh, shown off. The first thing Microsoft showed off after they said, here's the X. Uh, how, how good did this game look and how, where do you guys stand on it? Because car games are easy to, sell, easy to showcase consoles with, but they're not always games that are for everybody, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it was gorgeous, yeah. but I don't really play Forza games that much, so I probably wouldn't play this one, but I will be happy to watch people at IGN play it on our 4K <laughs> TV. I'll be like, wow, guys, that is beautiful. Yeah, I think with, with this Forza, we've kind of reached the point of uh, video game graphics where I'm just like, 
it's really hard to tell mm -hmm. yeah. that that is a that is a video. Not game. a real car. Yeah. E even the footage we're looking at right now, I always try and look to the outside. Like look at the crowd. You can see there. That's, that's the big telling yeah. point, right? Because I think people do such a great job of designing these cars and their interiors. The beads and just of the, the water coming across. But the yeah, it's the shield. backgrounds that really sell it for me, and the textures and the grass and the water and the all that. The skies, the yeah. weather effects. It's like, do your clouds look like real clouds? Do they have a meaning? Do they have purpose? <laughs> yeah. Well, with Horizon 3, they were telling me, uh, Ralph Fulton, the creative director, before that game came out last year, they were telling me they sent a couple of our artists to Australia with a ridiculous mega texture HD camera <laughs> and just shot the sky yeah. for yeah. days on end. And that's why the skies in Horizon 3 look so good. And I'm guessing that's probably what they did here. Oh, yeah. Because uh, those games do share tech. Across uh, across motorsport and Horizon, and uh, it's, it's funny. I I love motorsport. It's a great series, but I've come to love Horizon more. It's just so. It's just it just oozes fun. Whereas motorsport is fun, but it's definitely a bit more serious. It's a yeah. it is a yeah. competitive track racing game. No Hot Wheels track in Forza. <laughs> no, nothing. and that's exactly like we do know that we saw at the end of the Microsoft conference that Forza Horizon 3 and a number of other recent first party titles are getting Xbox One X asset upgrades. Yeah. So we're going to get we're going to be able to play Horizon 3 in 4K. So I, I'm actually as excited about that as I am about playing Forza Motorsport 7. And don't forget the benefit to the movies. It's going to be the only device with a 4K UHD player. So any movie files out there who want to see their movie experiences That's there. That's true. See, I didn't even think of that. And yeah. now I'm like, now I've just shifted if it's so slightly. <laughs> shifted. Yeah, so, I see what you did there. Yeah. Oh. It was on purpose. <laughs> see, that just makes me think of back when the PS3 launched with the Blu-ray player. And everyone's just mm -hmm. like, well, now we have to get this because yeah. it just has so much utility. And it just makes sense outside of gaming as well. Um, yeah. I All right. Crackdown <laughs> 3. We got to uh, we'll move to the next big. I mean, right. th this is the other game. It's Forza and Crackdown 3 are the two that seem to be marketed as the premier, quote unquote, premier Xbox One X showcase titles. Crackdown 3 even shipping on the same day that the X is, November 7th. Uh, I don't know if I got a chance to play it. I don't know if any of you I I know, had a chance able to play it. Uh, I've played it before. I know, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> you played multiplayer at Gamescom a couple of years yeah. back, and you haven't let us forget about mm -hmm. it. Ever I have since, not played single player, which is what they're showing today. Yes. Oh, well, it's so, been a long time since we've we've heard from Crackdown. Very, very mm -hmm. long time. Uh, I did find out from the developers uh, in a behind closed doors demo. So I uh, I played a little co-op, which was fun. It was fun to run around with two people. But uh, you remember how back then, Destin, yeah. they had said. Oh, hey, there's going to be a multiplayer beta this summer, and that was two summers ago. Yeah. <laughs> well, they, they, the developers back uh, behind closed doors more or less said, yeah, that we're, without explicitly saying yes, they said, yeah, we've got we've to get, get our game propped up and running in the real world. So I think we can look forward to a multiplayer beta between now and November 7th. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you know, I played this uh, at the Microsoft Showcase, and again, like I said, behind closed doors in co op. And I'll tell you, for, for better and for worse, it's totally cracked down one, uh, not only from the way it plays, which is great, but I don't know, it's, you know, it's got some time, but for, a, for an Xbox One X showcase title, you know, it's a new console, powerful console, it, it's not, it's not visually wowing at yeah, this point. Just like even watching that video, I am not super impressed. Like with, it's weird to say, but those explosions, they looked a little weird and like, they stood out a little too much in the world, not yeah. to say that it's like weird. It's like there's an outline to it. I know it has like that kind of yeah, the cell shaded style. comic yeah, book kind of look. Yeah, but to it just it. didn't look quite right. It, I agree. Yeah, it's. I mean, hopefully that's going to come along as uh, with the polish as, as the game nears completion. And of course, mm -hmm. graphics aren't the most important thing. Sure, but, it's about but, playing. But too. they have specifically been positioning this as an X showcase title. Mm -hmm. And it, it, if, you're, if you're looking at that and you don't own an Xbox and you're thinking, should I get an Xbox One X? That's not going to move you're not, That it's game not gonna is not going to motivate yeah. you to do it. But again, to be very clear, it's still just stupid fun. I mean, mm -hmm. jumping yeah. around, collecting the orbs, leveling up, picking up cars, throwing them halfway across yeah. the map. It's, That's what it's I want to do. every bit as fun yeah. as ever. Yeah. I thought for sure they would focus on the destructibility more because of what we saw in Gamescom. Like, that's a really cool way to show power of hardware. They didn't do that. Yeah. Uh, so now I want to move to what is far and away my favorite Xbox game of the show, and that is Sea of Thieves. Uh, I need all of you to play it as soon as possible. I know we, we've been talking about this uh, already, but... Uh, I am so intrigued by this game, and yes. I really want to hear your thoughts on it, because you've played it, right? This, I've played it twice this, yep. this E3, and I played it a couple times last E3. Wow. Because I'm still 
confused. I'm like, even, <laughs> even, even um, after the Microsoft conference, I was like, that looks fun, but I still don't really know how I'm meant to play it. It's, that kind of is what I felt with um, some other games that have been shown previously. It's just like, I see what we're doing, but like, what's the point, right. in a way? Um, but even that demo, though, like when they got on land, like that is kind of what sold me. Even though the sea adventures look a lot of fun, I just want to go fight some gel some skeletons with guns yeah. with my friends. Yeah, and that's and that's a common refrain I've been seeing with this game because I've you know I've been very effusive with my praise on social media and on IGN, and a lot of replies I get uh, are I don't get it. It do it doesn't look that great. It's really this game really seems to be a case of as soon as you play it. It clicks. It clicks and you get it, because it's, it's just, Destiny, I know you, you're a huge Destiny fan, yeah. and you know, they're... Th it's about the fun it's, experience it's, of yeah, playing it, together. Sea of Thieves is, is structured kind of loosely similarly in that it's a, it's a persistent online game as a service, play with your friends and, mm -hmm. and go on adventures of sorts together. But for me, the differences with Sea of Thieves is it's so much more lighthearted and approachable. Mm -hmm. You know, Destiny has amazing gunplay, but it is, you know, you have to be willing to go in there and grind yeah. and work pretty hard to, mm -hmm. to get to the goal. And there's, there's so much value in that. But with Sea of Thieves, it's just way lighter, yeah. way more approachable. The four of us could jump in and be a crew. And we could do, you know, you get a treasure map or, or uh, that you have to find, you have to look at the shape of the island and find it on your world map and then navigate and sail there. Or, sail there. or uh, you, get, you can get riddles too. You can uh, get riddles from, from people in, uh, in the towns, NPCs, and decipher the riddle and mm -hmm. go find the treasure. And so we could, the four of us could get on there and play, we could do two or three quests or treasure hunts in a night and log off and have had a great time without having like the, you know, hours and hours of, of grinding. And that's, and I don't make, mean to sound, make grinding sound like a terrible thing, but it's just this game is, it takes a different approach to it. A so different here, tack. Here's what I know. Alana and Marty played it last year and it's one of their favorite E3 memories ever. Like they had just such a blast playing this game. I mean, so that's what I get too, is like the tone change is so appealing because we have so many gritty, dark, yes. intense games, first person shooters, and those are fun and they have their place. But this one's character is really what sold me, especially on this demo this year. It was just so funny. And it looked like generally just a good time. And like you were saying with Marty and Alana, they always praise like how fun it was, just how funny the the characters were and just the environment too. Mm -hmm. um, and like compare that to Ubisoft's Skull and Bones, like I love how those are so different, but they're both pirate games. Yes. And it's just like two shades of the same coin, you know, it's like really what I want. I just have a very quick question because it's been bugging me. Yeah. Does someone stay on the ship when you go <laughs> off on a don't have to. It's okay, totally you can optional. just leave the ship. Yeah. Okay, but but you can stay on the ship. You can stay yeah, on the what ship. What do you do on the ship while your friends well, are out of injury? Theory, theoretically, you could be. <laughs> can you just drive it away? You, you could, or you could be defending it because you know you've got to watch you out for other other crews <laughs> coming. They might come and try and Bye. break your ship. But uh, all right, State of Decay Two. Only the only gameplay demo was behind closed doors. I got a chance to see it. Uh, it is very much. I I love the original State of Decay. I don't know if you guys. I loved it so it. much. Yeah, yeah it's, a ton of fun. It's because it's secretly a role-playing game, yes, right? Yes. Where you're managing relationships I and just, resources. You gotta choose who you're gonna kick out of your group and who you're gonna go save. It's like, oh, yeah. well, that person. Do I really like them? <laughs> yeah, you can, and so, you can die. Sorry. Yeah, I got to see State of Decay 2 running <laughs> behind closed doors uh, with Jeff Strain, the studio head at Unnet Labs, and it is very much a traditional sequel in that it's it is. Bigger, it's better, it's more state of decay. And sometimes that's really boring, like, oh, that's, oh no. that's all you're doing for a follow-up is just kind of more. But no, in, I think with this game's case, it really works because they just, the, they nailed the core of it with state of decay, but the peripheral stuff, the polish <laughs> and the, you know, the, the sort of, uh, sheen on it were, were lacking. That game was very rough around the edges. I kind of loved that, though. It was funny. Yeah, there's an element. It was, it was charming in its own way, but yeah, this definitely, if stepping that up for this next game is crucial, I think, because yeah. they have so much support and because it got so big. Right, and they, they have to, because it's going to be a $60 game this time. Yeah. It was a $20 download last time, so, you know, it's, uh, they've, they've got to, but they've got more time. They've, I'm sure have more money from Microsoft this time. I mean, just looking at it, absolutely they do. But yeah, they, they basically, they've fleshed out the base building stuff, they've fleshed out the relationship stuff, the UI's been completely redone, it's running on a new engine, 
Uh, you can so, play with people? Yeah, and that's the big one. Thank yeah. you, Destin. <laughs> Four-player co-op, which yeah. is the one big, big, big thing that the first game didn't deliver. That's what I'm most excited about, playing with a bunch of other people and, like, taking over this world. Yeah, so I can, if I'm, if I'm in my game and I want to, if I'm looking for some co-op help, you, you, you fire a flare from a flare gun into the air, and it will, and then if you've set, your, if you've set yourself to be available to come in, it, it will pull you into my game, and then we're playing together. Yeah, That's I cool. love that. It's like the Souls games. It's perfect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, State of Decay 2, that was, was dated for spring of 2018. Mm -hmm. Spring's going to uh, be busy. Yeah. yeah. There's already so much Early 2018 spring. is, like, ridiculous now. <laughs> yeah, it's front-loaded. Yeah, I'm it's convinced so, and that's <laughs> that spring is the new fall. Because there's so many announcements again, for spring. Yeah, yes, for like again, the third year in a row. Yeah, second, third year, and that's really exciting, but also incredibly tiring. <laughs> but a good issue to have. Yes. Uh, so we'll definitely be keeping our eye on State of Decay 2. Also of note, Correct me if I'm wrong, was this the first maybe ever Microsoft E3 conference where there was no Gears or Halo? There was sort of Halo. There was the Halo Wars 2 DLC. That doesn't count. Yeah, okay. that's, no right. Right. Yeah. that's the that's a Sorry. Stretch. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, yeah. It, it, yeah. Weirdly, I didn't feel the absence too strongly because there was so much at that conference. I wasn't. It, yeah, I wasn't that disappointed. I felt that they've deserved a, a yeah, year it, off. It's, it's, yeah, it's not a bad thing to yeah. take a break, build up, then next year when one or both of them come back, certainly yes. Halo will, maybe Please. years, we'll be refreshed and ready for That's them. It. Look, look what a year off did for everybody's enthusiasm for Assassin's Creed. Totally, yeah. right? Like, suddenly yeah. people care about that series yes. again. Origin well, it helps really that, the, that, that Origins in Egypt looks super cool. So good, yeah. Yeah. All right, we've got to take a quick break. Unlocked at E3 continues right after this. Did you know that IGN has an app that gives you all the tools you love right in the palm of your hands? It's fast, and you can save videos and articles for later, check your personalized feed, or check out all the latest reviews. Download it now on the iOS or Android App Store. The biggest entertainment event of the year is almost here, and we've got your all-access pass. IGN, live from San Diego Comic-Con. World premiere trailers and breaking news as it happens. The biggest stars and the world's best cosplay. IGN, live from Comic-Con. Coverage starts July 19. Two friends, one controller. IGN's Link Together turned Zelda Breath of the Wild into a co-op experience where Link is controlled by two players via splitting the Joy-Cons. Hyrule becomes a much more dangerous place, and friendships teeter on the edge. Check out Link Together Thursdays at 3 p.m. Pacific. Welcome back to IGN Live at E3 2017 in a special edition of Unlocked. It's episode number 300. I want to move now to the smaller games, which uh, I know for a lot of us are in fact the bigger games in our hearts. Oh, as, yes. good as, the, uh, as good as the AAA blockbuster level games are. And the first one that comes to mind for me, we got a little, uh, we got a little concert piano yeah, uh, recital that led beautiful. right into the trailer for Ori and the Will of the Wisps, the sequel to Ori and the Blind Forest. How beautiful and how incredible did that game look? It was it, stunning. Like by the end of the the um, trailer, I guess. Well, you can't really call it a trailer. It's sort of like more of a mood piece. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was. Um, I, you know, I had a little tear in the eye. It's just, I think you know, Ori and the Blind Forest is one of the most beautiful games uh, of recent years. Yes. It's got such a distinctive style to it. Within the first seconds of this uh, running, I knew exactly what it was going to be. Absolutely. Miranda? Yes. I'm just saying yes, and it, 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 all of it. It's like, yes, please. Yeah, it's such a beautiful game. And I also get like, a little emotional just because you feel, you feel the weight of this world on you mm -hmm. in this trailer, just because it is so gorgeous. And I'm super excited to get back into it. Yeah, it's funny, uh, Destin, I don't know how you feel about this game, but for me, like, State of Decay 2, sure, it'd be great on the Xbox One X, and Crackdown mm -hmm. 3 hopefully will look super nice, and of course Forza 7's gonna look good, this is the game that I would love to see running yes. in native was, 4K. Oh, like, yeah. look, put that well, on a giant 4K. I was like, why don't you just swap out Crackdown right? with this? <laughs> yeah. It's like, do this one. This yeah. one's beautiful. Totally. Actually, I kind of wish that, that that's what they'd done, is, yeah. is switch those announcements around. You know, over on PS4, they have Ratchet and Clank to show Absolutely. the animation style. Stunning this is game. doing a fantastic job of showcasing the same sort of aesthetic. Yeah. 
yeah, I, uh, it's no date on this, uh, so presumably next year, otherwise they would have told us yeah. it was going to be this year. Uh, let's move to uh, Ooblets. I know, Miranda, there, there we go. This That's is, the reaction this is I was my looking game. for. Please. Yeah, I am so excited the floor because is yours. this game looks like it was made for me. I actually found it while I was doing research for E3. And so what it is, it's an RPG. It's very big on customization. Is this Double Fine, or are they just publishing Double it? Fine is publishing Publishing, it. okay. Um, and the core of the game is you essentially raise crops that are like your little babies, because they're alive. So it's kind of Eva Pinata in a way. Yeah. And then they go fight things. FIBA Vignata is speaking my language now, yes. one of the most underappreciated yes. rare games ever. Yeah, it's such an adorable game, and there's like so much focus on customization, like you can decorate your house, you can change your outfits. Um, the characters that you raise, the Ooblets themselves, are adorable, and they have like a lot of variety too. And there's this cute one with a big old mustache, and there's this one that's like really small, and it kind of looks like Oddish almost. Um, and just the versatility of it all just looks really pretty. Um, I know Cliff Luzinski actually said it was going to be the next big thing on Twitter, which <laughs> is weird. No, I mean, the yeah. guys, he's a respected designer, been around many, many years. Yeah, I was actually really surprised to see that. Um, but just generally, I am so excited to see this is coming to Xbox, because it looks like something that would just live only on PC. Um, but I'm really happy to see that we're going to get it, and I'm going to play it forever, so <laughs> ever and ever. I played it last night, and it is very charming, and I, like, I immediately thought this was made for Miranda. <laughs> I will say that you do need a strong stomach for cuteness. It is very adorable cute. overload. So I just it like, is adorable uh, <laughs> overload. But the characters do kind of look like dolls in a way. Yeah. And it's very pastel and bright and made for me. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> no, yeah, but for sure, it's a different kind of thing. I'm just glad to see something like that can also live on Xbox. So uh, a game that's made for me, and I think, well, for all of us, judging from the reaction in the war room during the Xbox conference, the big applause moment that when the, the stoic IGN war room <laughs> erupted was not for the, one of the big AAA, you know, $50 million games. It was for Cuphead. <laughs> Finally. Finally getting yes. a release date yeah. September 29th. A little belated birthday present for me, which I appreciate. <laughs> I feel like so this happy. game has been in development my entire life. Mm -hmm. I think we were all just relieved that it's finally getting released. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah just like, please mean, don't get canceled. Please come out. Yeah. Please. Yeah. It's please. like, oh, thank God, it's still there. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just the, the level, I mean, I've, I showed, there aren't a lot of video games where I'll, I'll show them to my wife because she just isn't a gamer and doesn't really care. But I, I said, you've got to see this. And yeah. she, she was blown away. I think this is a game, if you had this on your television, anyone in your house, anyone in the room is going to stop and go, what? What's this? It's like, what are you watching? Oh, you're playing. Yeah. Well, I remember when it was announced. What was it, 2014? Me, I think so. And that it was it right. was announced as part of like a montage, and, That's right. and mm -hmm. people were like, "What was that?" Yes. Like, it's like you know, it stood out so strongly yeah. from the rest of that montage that people were immediately just like, "Oh my god, I need that game now." It's a small team up in Canada. It's two brothers, and I think one of the brothers' wives is an artist as well. It's like right. a very very like small team that's that's. Uh, been pining away on it for years now and yeah it's boss rush it's mostly a boss rush game mm -hmm. which of course that's just you know it's sort of almost contradictory to what it looks like it is where it's cute and adorable but they added uh, like a year or so ago they added some traditional platforming levels too so God, I can't wait to see I, I just hope that game turns out as well as we all think oh, it will too. like we've played it at a thousand conventions yeah. and trade shows at this point but so, uh, we'll find out. Yeah, soon so like enough. what I especially love about Cuphead is that even though it looks kind of like a cute, accessible cartoon, it's also a little horrifying. Yes. Like, yeah. It's so creepy with those the characters and the enemies that you fight. Like they will haunt my memories. So <laughs> I am ready. Uh, another a big surprise The Last Night. This oh, stopped yeah. Yeah. This one looks dead awesome. in my tracks during the Microsoft conference. Take, you're seeing it, if you're watching on video, you're seeing it on the screen now. Uh, this game looked. Incredible, just a, a Blade Runner meets pixel art yeah. aesthetic. Mm -hmm. How cool did this game look? It, it looks absolutely fantastic. It looks like it's going to be a side-scroller game where you have to kind of solve puzzles using cover and stuff like that. A uh, little bit of combat in there. I can't wait to experience it. Yeah, I'm actually checking this out tomorrow on the show floor. I'm oh. really excited to sort of delve a little bit deeper because for me, the main thing was, wow, this game looks incredible. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I just can't wait to figure out what its gameplay hook is. Yeah, the, yeah. And the, the thing I've seen a lot of people uh, 
compare it to online just from the trailer, mm. which I totally get, and I, I would love it if this comparison proved, proved out to be true. Flashback. For those, mm. well, yeah. you, that's you, what I you, thought well, of. Most of you, well, Miranda's too young, probably to no. remember Flashback. Yeah, I don't Lucy remember probably flashback. as well. But, uh, <laughs> Destin, you and I, us, mm -hmm. us old, old bastards, know that uh, <laughs> Flashback was an incredible, like this visually stunning, side scrolling sort of 16 bit yep. adventure game mm -hmm. back in the, the Genesis era. And if, yeah, if that. I hope if, it's a little like that. Yeah. yeah. If The Last Night turns into that, I think we'll, we'll all be in for a treat. So uh, now I want to move, we talked about the big games, yeah. the small games, Destin's face is lighting up because I want to talk about the surprises mm -hmm. from Microsoft's E3 conference. Miranda's hey. doing a little dance over yeah, here, yeah. So but I, I have to start with Destin because Destin, I know you were, we were talking off air, this might be your game of the show personally. Oh, yeah. It's uh, got my vote. <laughs> Anthem, which yes. we were, it was teased at EA Play on mm -hmm. Saturday, 24 hours later, you got to see it, uh, a, a pretty meaty gameplay demo, mm -hmm. and it is Bioware, Bioware Edmonton, mm -hmm. uh, and presumably, well, this is, I guess, the Mass, the, the Mass Effect trilogy team, because yep. there's also the Dragon Age team. Mm -hmm. Talk there. about a demo. Like, this starts, and I heard Duggan sitting next to me go like, this is gameplay? And <laughs> it's like, yep, that is this running is, this is the gameplay. It's, gameplay. it's, it's incredible. Nice. Uh, we couldn't believe what we were watching. And then, you know, he gets to the end here in a little bit, and then you load in a friend, and then you think, okay, they're going to go into a loading screen or something. Nope, they jump off this wall and then go flying through the air. We were, we were stunned. We were I stunned. Think the one thing that stuck with me was that water scene. Yeah, when he goes straight in the water, it's like, oh wow, okay, that's what I like. For for, for me, I'm particularly excited. Uh, uh, like the fact that this is a Bioware game sells it for yeah. me. Like, yeah. Because when I saw this, I, I thought it looked cool, but I was also like, oh, it kind of looks like Horizon Zero Dawn meets Destiny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then I found out recently that uh, the lead writer on Mass Effect 1 and 2 is working on the story for this. So that... Drew that, 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 oh, The name escapes me. Please um, excuse my squeals. I'm... Just now, well, now so that's that, me. I'm more excited like, now. That, that, really, <laughs> like, so. that sells it because I want, I want this to have a fantastic story. Yeah. Because yeah. I never found it like this. I, I enjoyed yeah. Destiny, but Destiny did not have a great story. I want. I know. If it's, story. Yeah. If, it's yeah. Destiny, if it's a Destiny caliber game with a Bioware yeah. level story on, that's going to be great. Uh, the other big surprise, the trailer that said a lot with no words at all, <laughs> Metro Exodus, mm -hmm. the le next game, Metro 2033, Metro 2034. Uh, that this made me, this is, this, I said, oh, well, that I need an Xbox One X for. Oh, yeah. yeah. Look yeah. at that. It's it looks beautiful. absolutely gorgeous. It reminded me a little bit of Fallout, like Fallout, but like the next evolution of what that would be. I know it's Metro, yeah. but I'm really, really happy to see that sort of same post-apocalyptic future world, and you have to like, conserve your ammunition for yep. weapons and things like that. I'm just, I'm really stoked to see Metro on its legs again. I sort of thought that it had been shelved, yeah. that series. I kind of didn't expect to see it again, to be honest. Well. And it, it's come back in such a glorious fashion. So we shall see. Uh, so we've just got a f like 15 seconds each. We're on the time crunch here at E3. Mm -hmm. Our own personal Xbox games of the show. Uh, I'll just go ahead and start. Uh, no surprise from what I said earlier. It's Sea of Thieves for me. I again, I was so happy. That game made me, I was just, I left grinning ear to ear. It's incredible. You bring friends and you leave, you leave happy. Please play Sea of Thieves if you get the chance. Sign up for their, their insider program thing and they're adding more people to it each week. You've got to try it. Destin? Uh, Anthem. Anthem. <laughs> <laughs> that's no, it. That's it looks absolutely that's, that's fantastic. Go watch the gameplay demo. It can speak for itself. Lucy. Uh, I just want to highlight um, the Artful Escape, which was yes. a, a an indie game, a uh, Melbourne-based team down in Australia, uh, where you play. Ooh, for the home team. Yeah, do it exactly. Um, it's a platformer where you are propelled forward with your guitar, and it's got such a great soundtrack. I played it last night. I'm really excited. I have no idea how far along it is in development, but for me, it's playable that, on the floor. Go play it. If yeah, you go seen play it. it yeah. If, if you're at E3, go check it Miranda, out. So what Xbox Lucy just said pretty much almost convinced me for Anthem, also. <laughs> but I'm gonna stick by Ooblets because. I have to, and I'm very excited for that one. All right, uh, that does it for this special E3 edition 
of Unlocked, episode 300. You can catch new episodes every Wednesday on IGN at youtube.com slash IGN Unlocked in the IGN app, which is on Xbox One, or you can download the podcast from your favorite podcast service. Stick around. IGN Live at E3 continues in just a minute. IGN is the world's number one media brand for video games and entertainment. From breaking news and brand new trailers to reviews, let's plays, and the latest tips and tricks, IGN brings you the videos you crave everywhere you watch. Whether you're on the IGN app, PlayStation, Xbox, YouTube, Facebook, Snapchat, or IGN.com, IGN's got you covered on everything you care about. IGN, the number one source for video game fans worldwide. Did you know that IGN has an app that gives you all the tools you love right in the palm of your hands? It's fast, and you can save videos and articles for later, check your personalized feed, or check out all the latest reviews. Download it now on the iOS or Android App Store. <laughs> <laughs> 